Howdy, be Flobart here, and welcome. Everything get caught up here. All right. So, welcome to everyone, and we'll let's kick this thing off. Kind of show you where I'm at here is. Yes, yes. Keep walking. Why are you bumping my target, man? Go away. All right, so the um, the other usual stuff here, head sitting around the uh, explosive barrels. Yeah, you can stop anytime you want. Oh no! All right, keep going. So anyway, um, what we had here was target two. This was target one. And target two. For some reason, it's not showing chat. Ugh. All right, so yeah, um, adding the physics constraint to the target. Hang on, just a second, guys. Let me uh, stop the stream for just a moment and restart it. Okay, sorry about that. Um, for some reason, it just did not show chat. So all I did was to fix the physics constraint in the blueprint. There was no click here, click there kind of deal. I moved the base down just a little bit so that it goes underneath the ground. And I named it base and the target. I named it target. I know, it's kind of unique names there. Then I added a physics, a physics constraint and not attached to either one of those. And you come over here to constraint and component names and you put the component name for number one, which would be our base, and target for number two. It was just that simple. And you see where it's red on, on the base and blue on the, uh, the upper item? That lets me know that they're attached. And the red is actually going to be the, the anchor point, and the blue is going to be the moving part. So, that's awesome. Um the map itself this is a test map I also have the shooting range map I've made some upgrades to it it's still not done yet but it's close um, I want to work on this first and what we want to do here is when we go into our map and actually our scoring target one falls over target two does not it just kind of bounces so how do we know that we hit it besides the fact that it's bouncing. Well, let's create a score system. You can see I've already cheated a little bit, and I've got a widget already up there in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. It says score. I need to make a quick change to that. Uh, essentially, all that is is a widget called score, and inside there it just has that. What I'm going to do here is just add an image in, and I'm going to make this color and opacity. I'm going to set to black and 0.5 and I'm going to set that up here in the upper left hand corner and I'll make sure that I put a 0 or a negative 1 on that so that we make sure that it goes behind our, our score up there and it's already anchored to the upper left hand corner so I don't have to change anything the event graph essentially all I've done is nothing in here and I've just gone to and the designer where I put the score for, you can see it says 99 here. I just created a, a component, or no, uh, words, a function for it. And that's all I put in there. I gotta sneeze. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. But it's just a matter of um, to get the number to change to whatever your active score is you need to cast to your player character get a reference to your player character get a reference to your score and just drag it from here to here and it'll automatically create the two text so target has nothing to do with the actual targets themselves that's just when you drag off of here and you get score it, that's the the target of what you're trying to get so 
that should be good to go. So now when we go in here and hit play, it's going to as soon as you ignore the other junk. You see now it says score is zero because it defaults to zero. But we want to, whenever we hit the target, actually give us some score. So let's go to our event graph and do that. Compile and save. Get rid of every damn thing in there. So just like we did with the uh, the exploding barrels, click on this and add on event. And you see there's really, is it even in here? Nope. So we want to do event on any damage. Right there. Event any damage. So that's the one we're actually looking for. And we're going to get damage. We're going to output that and let us know that we've been hit. So at first, every time you hit the target, it's going to give you a score or a point. Um, kind of need to figure out how to prevent you from shooting the same target twice and getting, you know, for a bouncing target like this. On the other one, it's no problem. It's going to d delete itself after you've hit it, unless you can double tap it before it hits the ground then we can make it disappear if we want to. Um, but uh, let's actually... Let's just go with this for now. Let's actually get it to register the score and set our score plus one. So the first thing we want to do here is we're going to cast to our first person character because that's who's going to get the score and get player character we're gonna need that reference as well it's gonna let these hang out because we might add some more stuff in here damage causer not really gonna need that just yet but damage so let's go ahead and add a health in here and we want to change that to a float compile and save and we're gonna tell it to be a hundred health that's just a common for me. So from this, we want to get a reference to our health. And this is just one way we can do it. We can actually register it as health. Eventually what I would like to do is actually set up a collision box here or a box here that and a box here for the headshot, but whatever, you know. For now, let's just keep it simple. And we need to register that it it took damage and we could probably get it by without even doing that so once we've taken damage let's see if we can and now I'm doing this from the hip here so we'll start simple and add on it as we need to to make it functional we need to get score and we need to set score so we want to get our score. Let's go ahead and link these two together. And what we're going to do is do a integer plus integer. So we're going to get one and add that to our score. So get score plus one equals setting what the current score is. So test one feature here and there. Alright, see I, I just hit target and it's one. So every time we hit the target, it bounces a little bit, so we know that we hit it, and it gives us a point. So that's good. So, um... going to be an interesting way to try to figure out how to um, to do this. Is that a variable in has been hit and let's make that a boolean 
and see if we can call that in. So let's get our, our character, get our player folder, first person character, and we don't need that, we need this. All right, so what we've done here is we're using stuff that was already in the first person template. So in the, the hit results, probably what we're gonna do here is um, from the hit actor, we're applying damage and we're applying the amount of weapon damage. But um, we need a way of knowing that we just hit that target. So let's actually, let's drag this off of here. And first off, let's go ahead and add in a branch. And let's break this. So we want to do faults and has been hit. So that's what I'm thinking for right now is we need to ask has this target already been hit? If it has not already been hit, then it is going to allow us to score at that point. So technically speaking we could set that here. Set it has been hit is true. So let's see what happens with that by getting too crazy here. Alright, we got our score and we can't score again. So what happens now, actually we have two of them on here. Got one here and one here. Let's let this shift F1 thing go away. So we got our one point and nothing. But you see I'm trying to shoot this one and it's not giving me score because I've already hit that one. So let's actually delete this one and this one and this one because I don't think it's the same thing. So let's actually just grab this one and do that. Control C, Control V. So now we have two of them side by side to make sure that we're on the same page here. So go away, Shift F1 thing. So bang, got a point. Bang, got a point. There we go. It won't let me score again. So verify that again. Our score starts off as zero. Come on, there we go. So now you can see my score is zero in upper left hand corner. I shoot this target, I get a point. I shoot it again, no point. No point, no point. If I shoot this target, I get a point. Cool. So that works. Nice and simple. And all we did was event on any damage or event any damage. We added in a variable that says has been hit, and if we have not been hit, then we cast to the player character, give them one point, and then set that variable to has been hit. So that works. So essentially we can actually grab all of this, no, all of this, control C, and we can actually close target two, close the player character for right now, and let's try it for this right here, which is target one. So if I open up that blueprint, delete everything there and let's go ahead and event any damage put that in there and copy and paste now it should be the same thing compile and save and let's close that out let's hit play so now Come on, come on, go away. Thank you. Score, shoot the same target, doesn't score again. Get a new version of the same target, it scores. Shoot it again, it does not. So we'll hit this guy, and it didn't add it to our score. Because we forgot something, and I just remember what I forgot. Target one. What did I forget? 
I forgot this has been hit and we need to get here plug that in and we need to set it here so that should now fix target one so that when we're in here go in and currently we don't have it set up on these guys yet so we got no score for them but got a score for him and him and no double tap and a cheat so it doesn't matter how many times you actually shoot something you're only going to get points for that so we can actually go back into our exploding barrel and do the same thing here and just tag this on the end add in a variable as well we don't really need this but let's go ahead and put it in there anyway because we have the ability to put more of them in the, into the same um, actual map and by using these targets you can put as many as you want and now every time you shoot one it's going to give you the score so let's add to exploding tank connect you has been hit and you know I could have actually just put that in there and just copied and pasted it in and to keep it from getting an error I, I could have just right clicked on it and you can right click on a variable and actually make it into uh, a variable if you've just copied and pasted it in but I'll show you the correct way here so compile and save now if we go in here and play would you go away so score is zero bang one point two points three four everything is working lovely so double tapping does not give us any more score and this is just a whatever you know it's not part of our scoring system this is just because I was screwing with something else but it's fun to play with so so we now have a scoring system let's hit save all make sure that's saved let's actually go into our range map so you can see what I've gotten done so far and I'm just gonna hit play so start off here with nothing added a texture to the floor just because uh, nothing on the table yet nothing on the tower you can't fall out so I haven't done anything with that back end so you come in oh there's a guy here oh I got a point for him but it doesn't matter how many times I shoot him I'm only gonna get to one point so that's six points yay oh gotta jump over this and go through the tunnel oh there's a guy here oops missed yeah, there we go and we're gonna zoom in here and we can shoot this guy shooting the propane tank that's hiding in there cool but we can't see our score whenever we have our scope up so we know that um, shooting the tank is not going to give us anything else so, oh that hurt so if we shoot this we still get the one point for that but it doesn't damage or affect the other targets whatsoever So that's pretty much it so far. Still got this last little bit of area to finish out, but um, yeah, I got 25 points. I win. So that's pretty cool. Um, 
I guess, technically speaking, you know, since, you know, I've already accomplished everything that I need to accomplish. Um, oh, forgot one target right there. There we go. Couldn't shoot through the target, so we had to shoot around him. And nothing else. So we've got 26 targets on here. We get a score of 26 for hitting all 26. But, um, I guess if we wanted to, we could actually see what happens if we miss. Zoom in. That would be something totally different. Um, you'd have to create a basic class system, I guess, and go from there. So, targets. Uh, we've got all that done, and that's a very simple system for adding a score, and it was a lot easier than what I thought it was going to be. I was expecting it to get complicated and having to change things around, and uh, today's drink of choice, coffee and Mountain Dew, because these kidney stones won't grow themselves. So it's nice that once you shoot the target, you're not going to be able to pad your score by shooting the same target over and over again. So, kind of cool. But these targets don't shoot back. And I figured what this would be is a basic training map to where you could actually hone your skills. To, uh, you know, play with different guns and whatnot. So right now, we still have just the one gun. And it's just our sniper. I like those being able to fall over like that. Um, and I keep forgetting about that target right there. Because right now we have infinite ammo, and that's kind of a eh. What happens if you miss? We have 26 targets. What if you have 30 rounds of ammunition and you run out of ammo? Well, what do you do then? So, let's actually continue with our widgets. And let's actually go with our score widget. And I'm going to hit F2. And HUD. I'm going to change it to HUD. Now, I've already had references to it in the, the player character. So, let's go into our player character and open that up. And it was in here in our initial setup. So it's telling it, and see it automatically changed the name inside there, so we don't have to deal with it. So that's cool. So now we can just compile it and save, and everything should be good with the player. Um, so what we need to do now is we want to set up, and I, I've already created a variable. I was getting ahead of myself there. So we have that variable called ammo and it's already set to a at 30 so that's cool um, and actually we need to go back to our event graph and since this is for shooting all right spawn projectile there is no projectile being spawned um, so that's false we're not actually spawning a projectile. The first person template no longer spawns a projectile. It just does a line tray shot, and that's what you get. So let's actually take it from here. Um, we've got our branch node here for using our binox. No, we're not using binox, and now we can shoot. So that's cool. Um, input action touch. I'm not going to mess with that. Even though I'm not using a touchpad, I'm going to leave it in there because it works, I guess. Um, at this point, we could put this anywhere, but we need to have something early in what we're doing. So I'm going to try to neaten this up a little bit, and we need another branch node. What we need to do is we need to ask. And since it's already linked from true, 
we can make do with that. So I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to get ammo. So get a reference here, and what we're going to do is integer. So we need to find out is integer less than or equal to zero. Actually, no. Since we're going to run it off of the true, it doesn't really matter which way we do it. We need to go the other way. Is it greater than or equal to, or we'll just say greater than. We'll keep it simple. Is it greater than zero? If our ammo is greater than zero, true, then we can start shooting. So now, somewhere amidst all of this junk all here, and we can just put this at the very end. And let's go ahead and add in set ammo. And what we need to do again is get a reference to our ammo. And we need to do an integer, uh, uh, integer minus one. So now every time we fire, it's going to subtract one from our ammo count. And did I put in my sound file? Audio sounds. I don't have the clicky sound. So let me actually dig that up really quickly. Um, what I want to do is add a click sound in so that whenever we actually have zero ammo left, then we actually hear a click noise. Um, at some point or another, I'm going to actually move this, this these things around on my hard drive so I actually can uh, get more organized. Where in the hell is that folder? It's in alphabetical order. You think that would make it easier to find, right? Click to. I use that same click to sound for everything. All right, so let's go ahead and hit save all. And now, um, hmm. So we're asking, is our ammo greater than zero? If it is not, then what we want to do is come down here and play sound at location. This just kind of looks junky. There's just so much going on in here, but I'm trying to make it as semi-organized as possible. Then I'm going to get a reference to my mesh. And I will um, get world location. Connect that into there and click to. This actually needs to be given sound attenuation if this was multiplayer, but for right now it should not be a problem. So let's actually go in here to our map and we need to actually show what our ammo is. So let's actually go into our HUD widget and let's go, go ahead and put it up in the upper right hand corner of the screen. We're going to control C and control V and drag you over here. Anchor it to the upper right hand corner and essentially just grab in some text. We call this ammo. Center it. And let's go ahead and make. 
make you a little bit bigger. And that's good enough. Doesn't have to be perfect. So I'll show you how we did this before. And let's grab in one more text. And I'm just going to put this as 999. Make sure it's centered. And let's shrink that down a little bit because we should not have more than 999 rounds of ammo. So we'll grab that and create a binding. And inside here, so we got get score. We're going to just change this to get ammo. Two M's, dum dum. Easy, easy, easy stuff to do here. And all we got to do is cast to our first person character. Get player character, if I could learn how to spell. And from our first person character, we need to get ammo, connect this to here, and it automatically gives us our two text node that are it. So let's make sure that, yeah, see, in the wrong spot, upper right hand corner, upper right hand corner, upper right hand, and negative one's the order. Okay, we're good to go. So now if we go in here to play, we can see our ammo count is 30 rounds. And if we come in here and... Shoot, there's one point. And our ammo count is going down for each shot. So, um... To add to the scoring system, if we know that we have 30 targets and we have 30 rounds of ammunition, then if you miss one shot, then you pretty much won't be able to complete the mission. Okay, there was a... No, next one over. Okay. shoot this guy down to be able to hit that guy. So as we're going through shooting our targets, everything seems to be working just lovely. We're seeing our ammo count go down. So we're going to score go up, which is always a good thing. So now we're at the end. So if we're at the end of our, our mission, we would then need to create... Um, a trigger or a box or whatever get to this it'll say you know mission can completed your score was and that kind of stuff so we have eight rounds left so we're not hitting anything so our ammo count's not going down why is our ammo count not going down So we hear the click sound, but the ammo was not going down when we were shooting at nothing. So if we miss, this may be a good thing. We're not hitting anything. We're not applying any damage. To it. But as soon as we hit our target, then it's working. It doesn't matter if we're shooting the same target over and over again. So No ammos. So, why in the world is it not working? Everything else is working lovely. So, what that leads me to believe is it's definitely going to be inside this in the shooting mechanic. So, all right. So, how's everybody doing this evening?
sorry for the sniffles. The uh, the weather is changing rapidly back and forth. Hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. So, this is checking our ammo. That's fine. If we don't have ammo, we play the click sound. If we do have ammo, then we have to check to see if we're using the binoculars. If we are not using the binoculars, then we're playing the montage for our hands to to jiggle around when we shoot. We're playing the sound of the gunshot. Get player viewpoint. Um, okay. I guess that's one way to, to focus your, your line trace. And you're getting your rotation X vector, getting your actor location, and you're subtracting that from your trace. Yeah, I would have done this a totally different way. The way that I do it works, and a lot less of this going on. But, hey, this works, I guess. So you get your line trace by channel, and we're getting our hit results. Okay, it's from our hit results. So I guess what we need to do is we need to take this stuff right here and it needs to be way back here before we do our line trace, before we actually shoot our, our weapon. Um, actually, Control-Z, undo that. That's just our ammo count. We're only scoring when we actually hit something. So that's the deal, is when we hit play, we come in here, and we just got a point for knocking down a target and we reduced our ammo count by one. So we're reducing our ammo count just fine. But now that we're not even hitting anything... Okay, that's a complication that I, I didn't, didn't expect here. Is why is it that it's not reducing our ammo when we shoot? So probably should reduce our ammo before our, our line trace to get in before there. So maybe I'm onto something here. So let's actually go ahead and delete that from there. And let's go back over here again. You know, they got so much wasted space in here. Yeah, so, so much wasted space. Let's see if I can compact some of their junk here. Not saying that it's junk, but I'm just saying that there's a lot of stuff that could be compacted a lot more. Um, you know, we don't need all these stupid things here. That's confusing me to the point of not being able to actually think clearly for adjusting this stuff. So, pardon my OCDs while I clean some of this mess up. Yay, dog barking again. Alright, so you can see this is a lot of room already cleaned up. So what I'm going to do is, in between here, it's essentially your fire, you've fired already. This is just calculating your line trace at that point. So what I want to do is, in between the two of these, I want to set ammo and from this set ammo node is where we get our ammo and we want to integer minus integer and subtract one so let's actually go from here and let's go ahead and 
try taking our ammo away from there before we do anything to do with our hits. Alright, so I'm shooting at nothing, my ammo count went down. Shoot at the target, and it still goes down. So everything's working now. Just a better replacement. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you for the sub. So, now that we're out of ammo, oh no, and we only got six points, oh no, we suck, we can't compete. So, that's our ammo system, uh, but we also uh, created an ammo pickup. I'm going to go ahead and save all, and since there's so many distractions on this map, I'm going to go back to my other map, test map, and I already have, sitting right here, We'll take a look at it. This is an ammo can. It doesn't have to spin. I just want it to spin because I thought it would be different. So let's go ahead and click on that guy and hit edit. So what we've got here is this is the ammo can. All we've done is I can walk through this really quickly. Uh, on component begin overlap, essentially what we have is the ammo can, we have a box collision, and a rotating movement. Um, in the event graph, all we did was we right clicked on our box collision, add event, on component begin overlap, and then from there, we are doing a branch to see if we are visible. If we are visible, then we're going to set visibility to, to false. Now we're going to become invisible. Because we just walked over the ammo can, we want to, we want to pick it up. Okay, So we're going to cast our first person character, get our ammo count, and add 30 to our ammo count. And hello, Mr. Hang Up. And then, excuse me, go away. I'm trying to do something here. Thank you. Um, we're getting our ammo count. We're adding 30 rounds to our ammo count. And I've got it to print text for right now to say, hey, we just picked up ammo. And we're setting our ammo to whatever our ammo is plus 30. Then we're telling our ammo box and our ammo lid, because it was two pieces to make it, we're telling it to become not visible and then we're going to deactivate the collision for it by just grabbing a reference to our box collision which was um, yeah box collision is deactivated so we can't just keep walking over an empty box and picking up more and more ammo it's not there so we can't pick it up we're going to set a delay of 10 seconds and then we're going to tell everything to become visible again and our box collision to start working again and we're going to tell it to become visible again so it's already set up. We set that up in another video, but let's go ahead and we look at our bar, right? Our ammo count is 30. Now it's 60. And you see it disappeared. And we can't just keep picking up an, an invisible one. But here, after a 10 second delay, it will respawn and we can go back and get more ammo. Yay! Now we have 90 rounds. So that's our ammo pickup system. So now we can do our thing. I don't know why, but that stupid thing is um, annoying and fun. <laughs> to try to hit a moving target like that. Yay, exploding targets. <coughs> okay, the asset pack, in case you didn't know, is um, we're using the City Studios um, Polygon Battle Royale. That's where the character came from, the weapon, the barrels, the targets, all that stuff came from. And he's just running around with a G36. So, what if we don't want that sniper? You know, we want to change guns. Then, essentially what we've done is we've set up the widget to use. Uh, when we hit the right mouse button, it gives us our mouse or our, um, our scope screen here. And the mouse wheel, we can use to zoom in. 
that does nothing. Shooting this one, however, knocks that target over, but doesn't give us a score. There, we shoot it, now we can get a score. So we can pretty much set up anything as a target now to give a score. And again, it doesn't matter how many times we shoot this target. It won't fall over. Fall over, damn you! Oh shit, I'm out of ammo. Okay, wait a minute. More ammo. So we need a cool sound for our ammo pickup, so... You know, we don't want to just walk over it and like, Oh, did we just get it? Uh, there's no sound. we got to have something. Um... Okay, totally, probably, definitely inappropriate sound. For now, we can just use the, the click. So let's go into that and let us edit. And somewhere in between here, betwixt, um, let's see here. Guess it doesn't really matter at, at this point. We just need to do it before we tell it to disappear. Or reappear actually so right here between the deactivation and the delay all we'd have to do then is just come in here drag these guys out of the way for a moment drag off from the deactivate the box collision and play sound at location so what I want is click two. there's much better sounds we could use for that I just want to go ahead and just showcase how you're doing that. Now, the, the thing that I'm going to complain about all the time is the attenuation. So let's test it out really quickly. And we go in here, and as soon as we walk over it, we hear a click. We hear the noise. We hear something. It could be a ta-da or, you know, whatever, the sound of a magazine change or what have you. Um, oh, let's, let's make sure that... Okay, we're running back and forth over it, and it's not making any noise. So, we know that um, it's right here. Yeah, so it's not going to make that click noise because it's gone. But as soon as it comes back up, there we go. Now, we said we don't want to have more than 999 rounds of ammo. Um... I'll get to that in just a second. The other thing was sound attenuation. And the audio sounds, there's no attenuation settings on these. It's not going to be a problem if we're in single player, but in multiplayer, if you're five miles away on the same map, I don't want to hear you picking up an ammo can. So all you have to do is just, um, I'm going to go to click to, and I'm going to right click and create Q is one way of doing it. But now I'm actually going to go ahead and right click go to sounds and what I want to do is make a sound attenuation close <laughs> close that's all we want is it to only be close sound and it's that eh, whatever is fine it's 400 and 30, 600. we can change it to 200 and 600 so it, the inner radius where it's going to be full loudness is 200 units away from the sound radiation. Um, and then after 600 units, you won't hear a thing. So that's cool. And a good way to, um, and I'm just going to set up an example here, is I'll create another one, sound, and we'll do a sound attenuation jams, whatever. And we're going to leave it the way it is. We're not going to change anything. And then I'm going to go to music. This is I just a, I don't know why this one's in here. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to create Q. And that's fine. I'm going to go into it and it doesn't matter. We can set this up to be looping not pooping, but looping. And then our output, we want to select our attenuation as our jams. And let's save. And I'll 
pretty decent sized map. So I'm going to actually drag this right here into this corner. So you can see that huge circle right there. That's the, the sound attenuation radius. The little circle is going to be the full sound, and it's going to fall off on the volume the farther away you get from it. Until when you're outside of the circle, you're not going to hear it at all. So then we can go back to our... Go back to our ammo can, just as our prime example here, and play sound at location. Now we can scroll down here and attenuation settings, close. So it's only going to activate to us, but anybody far enough away from it won't hear it. So now, if it's physically possible for me to shut up, okay. We don't hear any music whatsoever over here, but as soon as we start getting closer to this corner right over there, we're going to start hearing the music getting gradually louder until it's full volume. So I will shut my stink pipe long enough for you guys to actually hear it. Now the volume of it did kind of overweigh the sound of the clicking of the uh, ammo. So I can't even hear it picking up the ammo. But you get the idea. That's that's what the sound attenuation does and how it helps and affects the map. So if you wanted to make that smaller, so I'm going to leave it selected here and I'm going to go into my attenuation for the music and let's go ahead and leave that at 400 but let's make this 1200 for the fall off distance hit file and save now if you look the big circle is much smaller so if we go in here move out of the circle and it's gone Okay, um, close. The attenuation on this one right here is fine, but let's actually go into our... Why is it so quiet? Can't hear the click anymore. So I'm actually going to make sure that I'm volume is 100% or 1, pitch is 1, start time 0, um, location. We didn't set a location. Dum dum. Doofus. Let's grab reference to our ammo box. Actually, no. I already have box collision right there. So I'm just going to grab it and get world location and plug that into there. Now we'll be able to hear it correctly. Because I are stupid. There we go. The actual sound cue that I dropped in the map is right here. So where that comes in handy is when you're creating a map, especially if it's multiplayer, you want to set up sound triggers and things like that to where if I, I blew up that barrel, that sound is playing at the location of where it is. The sound of my gunshot happens right where I am. Because I told it to play from my location. We also don't have there our magazine magazine count, things like that. But with that sound attenuation, you always want to set up everything. So if you look at your player, player blueprint, Anywhere where you're casting a sound, if you're going to go to a multiplayer environment, you always want to make sure you set up a, an attenuation. Because there was a, an asset pack. And I, and I like it. I really do. Um, it's uh, I might end up integrating it with the same asset pack, the Battle Royale pack. 
and it's the hell I'm getting old drawing blanks here not shooting blanks I'm drawing blanks big difference damn dirty minded people or maybe that's just me um, the survival um, kit survival game kit and really cool asset pack in the marketplace it's like 50 bucks it's great but they didn't set up their sounds correctly they forgot to connect all the little dots together and what happened was you're sitting there playing and you got buddies playing with you also your buddy's a mile away on the map and he starts eating an apple and you hear the sound as if you're eating the apple because there's no sound attenuation level to it. So the sounds are all screwed up. If you hear a gunshot, it sounds like you, know, you hear, oh shit, where was that? You know, it sounds like you just shot your weapon and you're like, no, I've got full ammo and, you know. We haven't been able to kill this guy. Ooh, yeah, you get in the way of my damn swinging target. We haven't killed him yet. So I guess, you know, we can either pick that up in another video and start killing things. What we have is an effective shooting range. And what I want to do is make that, like, when you first go into the game, what happens is you are now going to have to go through basic training. And then you have to complete the basic training map before you can actually go on to the the full map. So let's go back into the range. So what we have here. Now if this gunshot is too loud, I think it's fine for now. We only have 30 rounds of ammunition, so we got to make our shots count. I still, like I said, this map is not done. I need to put some stuff out here to kind of feel like you're just not on a, a floating platform in the middle of outer space. So I guess what you'd want to do here is... Um, Set up something at the end so you know that you've come to the end of the map. Secret squirrel target there. Change up the weapons. I think that's probably what we're going to do for the next video is actually do weapon changing. Because, you know what? This is fine to actually do with uh, the sniper rifle because you can zoom in and zoom out, and that's cool. You got binoculars. This is not really a sniper range, so do you really need a sniper rifle? And hit B again to come out of your binoculars. I guess one of the things that needs to be done here is back at the beginning of the map, I could have just hit escape and then hit play again, but. No one ever accused me of being smart. Um, putting like a, a blackboard here and having all the controls so we know that space bar is to jump. Right mouse button is for our scope. And left mouse button is to fire. We need to actually... Oh, I have one round left. Oh no, I have no ammo. Um, R would be a reload key. Really quickly, let's set up a reload system. That will be quick and easy. So we'll go back to our player, first person character, and well, let's get all this stuff for the shooting stuff. Well, you're already walking. What do you mean, add, add a walk system? You, you're talking about um, like sprint versus walking? So you can actually, as you're walking, but you want to sprint, hit the shift key so you walk faster or sprint? That, that's pretty quick and easy. I can do that too. 
Um, I mean, that's really quickly. Like, character movement, scroll down over here, max walk speed. Let's set that to 300. And then I can just go right here. Keyboard shift. We'll do left shift. And we'll use a press and release. Oh, well, okay. Well, I mean, that's, that's still pretty much the same thing. Is um, We could actually change our max walk speed to, we'll say, 400. So, our left shift, and then we'll do left control. Left control will be slow down and walk. So, keyboard, left control... It's going to be the same basic principle. So let's actually just drag these two down just a little bit more. Left shift is going to be for sprint. So when I press this, I want to, first off, I'm going to get a reference to my character movement. I'm going to set it between the two. And then I want to set max walk speed. You notice there was also one there for walk crouched. So I'm going to just grab this, Control-C, Control-V, and I'm just going to go ahead and leave that in the center because I'm going to connect this to here on release to here. I'm going to do this, Control-C and Control-V, and drag that to here, and we're going to do the same thing for left control. And we need to make sure we connect our character movement. So what we've done here is we're setting up this whole system. When we hit the left shift key, we're going to know that our walk speed is set to 500. So our max walk no max walk speed was 400. Yeah, 400. So this will be 400. So will this. But when we hit left shift key, we want to increase that to 600, so we're sprinting. But if we hit left control, we want to move this down to 200, so we're going to walk slower. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So now when we hit play, our walk speed is a little bit slower, and now we sprint, we're going faster. But we hit left control, and now we walk a lot slower. Yeah, that, that that's all you have to do. Let go of it, and we walk normal speed. Hit left shift, and we go faster. You can make that as drastic, or you know, you can make that much faster and much slower. But that's it. Um, that just handled a, a basic sprint and crawl, or slow slow walk mode. Simple enough. Now, if you had stamina and a stamina bar, if you want to get crazy and do all that, let's, um, let me finish this reload system really quickly, and then I'll come back to this. Um, or would you rather I just keep on with, with this and set up a sprint and um, a stamina bar? Uh, that's quick and easy as well. Um, Yeah, because we don't want to drain stamina while we're walking slow. That would be kind of a pointless deal. Um, okay, well, the reload is quick. Also, is um, we need to set up a new variable called magazine. Now, this... Excuse me? Why won't you let me set it? To magazine. Oh, never mind. Mag. We'll call it mag. Because I call this magazine here. I can't have two things of the same. And this is an integer. Compile and save. Our magazine size is 30. Compile and save. Now, 
this is something later on when we start changing weapons we're going to want to have it set up based on the individual weapons magazine so if i have a hundred round drum slapped on my, my m4 then you know i'm going to say okay i got that beta mag with it's 100 rounds so we have to update the magazine capacity so we could actually call this mag capacity and that's fine compile and save and we can see our capacity is 30 rounds so next thing let's go ahead and go to our widget and this was our HUD widget so we got our ammo up here um, to keep it simple I'm just gonna go ahead and just put it right underneath here I'm not trying to make some cool UI right now I'm just trying to get the basics so you know what we could actually yeah just put it right here next to this so let's grab this and just stretch it on out so we'll have a background for it we'll grab another text and we need to make sure we anchor it to the upper right call this our magazine now let's shorten it up to just mag mag okay and make sure it's centered shrink that down let's put a little gap in there so that looks lovely and then let's go ahead and get another text anchor top right 99 screw it 999 because you might have a belt fed weapon and it has 200 rounds so we'll put three digits in there should we hit center on justification shrink that down because we're never going to have more than 999 rounds in our magazine so there we go and that's that so with our magazine now we can get our text click on binding create binding and where it says get text I'm going to hit F2 get mag cap whatever good enough good enough then all we got to do is just um, cast to learning how to spell cast to first person third person player underscore whatever you call your character get player character since this is a single player at this point and first person shooter this is all fine doing it this way and we need to get mag capacity and we just want to link it to here and done and compile save close so now we go to play we have 30 rounds in our mag 30 rounds of ammo so at this point where we've got this we're we're doing our ammo count so what we have to do here is also figure out okay if our ammo count is zero let's change that to mag capacity and let's get rid of that and we want to know is our mag capacity greater than zero same thing right here let's get rid of ammo and we want to put mag capacity here all right so at that point we're gonna start and we'll just quickly take a look at that and as we're looking we have 30 rounds of ammo plus we have 30 rounds in our mag let's go ahead and throw a um, ammo pickup inside here so now when we hit play we have 30 rounds of ammo we have 30 rounds in our mag we go pick that up that adds it directly to our ammo count our ammo count 
not our magazine. So now we need to make sure that we're doing this correctly. We're getting our mag capacity and setting it. Oh, we need to dump that guy and we need to set mag capacity. instead of ammo. So now when we go into it and hit play, now that I'm not brain farting, we've added 60, we have 30 more rounds because of the ammo crate. Now we have 60 rounds of ammo, but 30 rounds in our magazine. We are empty. So at that point, here's where we come into refilling our magazine so you two guys can just piss off get over there and I'm gonna come in right here and I want to keyboard R so R for reload which is a common thing I want to doesn't matter yeah it should matter we and we have to kind of set up the idea of do we want to um, be able to reload our magazine? I'm of the school of thought of reality. Whenever I'm out shooting and I change my magazine, those if, if I have no ammo in my magazine, no problem. But if I'm shooting and there's three rounds left in my magazine and I change magazines and throw away that empty magazine that only has, well, the, the magazine has three rounds in it. If I take that out of my weapon, I'm throwing it away and I lose that three rounds of ammo. That's my train of thought. Okay? Most games will get the ammo count and say, oh, well, there's five rounds still in there, so I'm going to keep those five rounds and only add enough to top off my magazine. I don't believe in doing that, but both ways are, are easy to set up, and I'm going to do it the correct way. Whereas if you take, and you've got five rounds left in the magazine, you throw that magazine away, you've lost those five rounds of ammo. So that's just my, my way of thinking. So if I press R to reload, I want to make sure that I have ammo. Now you could actually set it up to where when you do your ammo pickup you're actually adding ammo well and there there's a conundrum also are you adding 30 rounds of loose ammo and you're having to load your magazines what are you doing when you hit the reload key i will let you guys help decide on this one right here if you find a, a magazine of ammo on the ground that's full then it's going to have 30 rounds of ammo in it and you're going to give you yourself a plus 30. Try not to overthink this, but we need to know that we have ammo. So we're going to end up getting a reference to our ammo. And we are going to set our magazine... Yeah, see, I, I'm trying to gear... And that's the thing I talked about once before was um, developers. It is your responsibility to do things, okay? Today's generation of, of kids are given an Xbox, PlayStation, whatever console, or a computer, and their parents just throw Steam uh, money in their Steam wallet or, or, you know, give them a prepaid debit card... Here, just buy whatever the hell you want game-wise. Just leave me the hell alone. And they, they, the game systems turn into electronic babysitters. Is that going to change? No, probably not. But what people are seeing in video games, they're going to end up conveying into the real world. Well, why isn't it like this? It's like this in Call of Booty. Or, you know, Fortnite does it this way. Why isn't it like that? No, you can't compare video games to the real world, but you need to be comparing the real world to your video games. So I leave it up to you guys as developers to actually start putting realism back into video games and, you know, 
we have to guide the future young minds with our games into an appropriate way of thinking instead of general douchebaggery. <laughs> All right, off my soapbox. So we're going to do this in a semi-realistic way of saying that when we, we pick up that ammo box, we're adding 30 rounds to our our um, ammo. I mean, we could even break it down even more and say that when we picked up that ammo can, it gave us one full magazine of ammo, but we're not going to get stupid here. We're just going to pull from our ammo count at, at 30 rounds of ammo, and we're just going to... We're going to start simple, and we're going to top off our magazine. So we want to get our ammo, and we want to get our mag capacities. We're going to be working with both of those. But here's the thing, is our mag capacity is 30 rounds. What the hell? Oh, shit. Sorry, um, that was gunfire. Real world gunfire. Um, not sure if you guys could hear it at all, but, um, that was about 20 rounds of ammo that was just fired, um, less than a mile away from my house. I, I am not bullshitting, so. Somebody just dumped about 20, 25 rounds of ammo. <sighs> Whatever. All right, so, what in here? And if it was, you know, too close to here, there are ways of solving that problem. Yes, I keep uh, uh, Cockton Lock 1911 on my desk. Oh no, it's a real gun. Yep. There's another one right here. This is my my my, my concealed carry. It's uh, another 45. Well, I can reach over behind me this way, and I've got uh, three AR-15s within the arm's reach and an MP5. So yeah. I have a clean criminal history. I have this little binder over there that has this little thing with these little tech stamps on there. Where you have to pay two hundred dollars for a frickin' postage stamp it says you're legally able to have a short barreled rifle or an automatic weapon or suppressor and that kind of stuff. <coughs> so yeah, sorry, I'm temporarily distracted by the sound of active gunfire near my house. So we're gonna get our current mag capacity and we need to probably set a limit on our mag capacity. So that's going to be easy enough to do mag max ammo. And we're just going to create a variable, compile and save. So now we're going to set that to 30. And compile and save one more time. And we're going to get that reference to that. Yes, a lot of variables staged up, ready to start doing something. <sighs> um, <laughs> so when we press R, we want to get our mag capacity. And we're going to start off with a branch node. We're going to prevent an accidental uh, stupid mode. First thing, we are going to drag off from there and hit equal, equal. And that's going to give us this one right here. And I'm going to grab ammo. I'm just going to move him out of the way for just a minute. And if our mag capacity is equal to our max mag ammo, then we don't want to do anything. We don't want the player accidentally just smacking it and just doing a reload animation. And when we do an animation later on, so we're just going to prevent that from doing a you're reloading magazine just so they're doing some stupid dance. So we're going to prevent the magazine reload scenario if they're already full of ammo. So if your max capacity is mag capacity is 30 rounds and your max count for how many rounds your mag can hold is 30 rounds, you're not going to be able to do anything. 
but we're going to need to get that number. And we know what that number is because we're going to see it in the upper right hand corner of our screen. So we're going to know what our mag capacity is. So here's where it's going to be. Yeah, now I hear sirens. <laughs> All righty then. My brain is like clicking right now on how I'm going to do this and set up the ammo count and everything else. So it only takes the the amount that we, we need to take out. So we're not just refreshing that. Yeah, I'm hearing all kind of sirens and stuff now. So that's, yeah. Oh, let's see here. I'm trying to think of the best way to actually do this because for right now, we can actually get our mag capacity. And I'm for clarification wise, I'm going to just drag another version of it in here. So we're going to get that. We're going to get that car, our capacity. What our magazine currently is containing. Okay. We're going to ignore this, and we're just going to shove that over there. We're going to find out what our current round count is. If it's 20 rounds, or if it's 15, or seven, or whatever. Um, we need to know what our mag capacity currently is. And then what we want to do is, I'm almost there, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm playing with this room right here. This is our how much ammo we have in, separate from our magazine capacity. So when we, we are able to actually reload, what we're going to do is we're going to set our mag capacity. Alright, so the reason we're coming off of faults here is is our mag capacity the same as our our magazine quantity or ammo count? And I probably should change these rounds, but I'm confusing myself with my own words here. So what we're going to do here is we have this. We're going to set our magazine capacity to our magazine capacity. max mag ammo that should be max ammo magazine max capacity that's I, I need to put these in in terms that I'm not losing my mind over my mag capacity and the max mag capacity is right there. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to integer, integer, int, your integer, we're going to integer <laughs> plus no, we're not even going to do that. We're, we're going to set our mag capacity to what our mag max capacity is. So that's actually just going to and I'm just going to go in here. So now we're we're taking away from our, our magazine count. If we pick up ammo, it's only going to add it to our ammo count. So now we have two rounds left. We're going to hit the R key and reload. We now have 30 rounds in our magazine. So that's that's good. We reload it from there. And then we are going to subtract. Uh, I'm almost there, I promise. <laughs> With the mathematics, is we needed to know from this mag capacity here. what What is here? What is in that magazine? And let's actually go ahead and 
just because I want to be able to, to visualize things better. Let's just put you right there. Let's um, print text. And we want it to we want it to come out. We want we want to know what that is. We're gonna get rid of this in just a moment here. Print text is your friend. So now when we actually do this, we had R to reload. We're not doing anything because our magazine is full. Twenty-eight. Okay, so this number right here is how many rounds we physically have in our magazine. We'll get rid of that. This is back to where it was before. So now we get this magazine capacity. What we need to do is figure out what amount of rounds needs to be added because and here's the thing else is let's go ahead and fix the rest of this we'll come back to that part and make that work so now we need to take this and let's go for um, actually this let's get our ammo subtract our ammo from that number which is 30 rounds for now so this will be back over here so we know that it leads into there and it's going to lead into there I know it's weird because it's crossing over but whatever we're going to set our ammo to this number um, is that right <laughs> with all the sirens that I hear going off right now and the fact that there was gunfire not far from my house and I live in a nice residential neighborhood <laughs> let's go ahead and grab that so let's reload and now we only have 30 ammo and we have 30 in our map. So we have 15 rounds left in our map. 14, 13, 12. We're going to hit the reload key and now we have zero. So what happens is that if I hit the reload key now, I have negative 30. So that's where we need to start setting up a system for checking at this point to make sure that we have ammo to pull from and if we we have less than 60 rounds or less than 30 rounds we can't reload again so we're going to have to do this. Let's run off from that and set a branch. And we need to get from this number right here our ammo. We're taking this number right here. This is this is our ammo. And we need to find is our integer is our it's our ammo that we have there greater than 30 is it greater than our max capacity or our 30 rounds is it greater than 30 then yes then we can set our ammo to that and we actually need that somewhere else we need that before here because we need to be able to prevent that from happening we can't reload unless we actually have 
ammo to reload from. So let's go ahead and drag out from here and do another branch here and go ahead and get reference to our ammo again. So now we want to get and find out is our ammo capacity integer is it greater than our mm, greater than 30 rounds it's starting to get ugly here see what you guys are making me go through You're making my brain hurt is it if it's greater than 30 rounds then we can do this There's a lot of refining you're going to end up having to do in a reload system. Because now, I hit reload. I can't reload now because I have magazine capacity is less than 30 rounds. It's not letting me reload. Yeah. Try to complicate things. One of those things where keep it simple, stupid. I'll actually come back to this because I I need to go ahead and just sit down and clear my head with the fact that there was shooting going on not far from my house. Uh, I need to make sure that, you know, I can get my head clear. I will come back and revisit this. The sprint thing, let's go ahead and take care of that really quickly. Um, we need to add in a variable called stamina and eh, we'll leave it as a uh, integer for right now compile and save we're going to set our stamina at 100 this will be the same as if you're trying to also show your health I'll show you this way because I'm using 100 instead of 1 and doing a scale from 0 to 1 I'm doing from 0 to 100 I'll show you how to set that up so we know that we have 100 as our stamina. Then what we want to do here is when we're sprinting, we want to take away from our stamina. So let's get our stamina. And, and here's where we'd also want to go ahead and set up a branch node in between here. So let's actually drag this one up a little bit. Let's grab a branch. Because we want to prevent somebody from sprinting if stamina is equal is less than is equal to or less than zero or is is equal to you know, whatever. So we'll just grab a reference to our stamina. and let's make sure that it's greater than so we'll do integer is greater than zero so now we're just gonna check is our stamina greater than zero that's all we're doing here and if so we're gonna set our max walk speed to 600 and then we're going to uh, get stamina and we're going to subtract um, there's probably going to be a better way of doing this and again I'll have to think about this too um, run it at 10 for now and then what we're going to want to do is set stamina because we want to as soon as we press it we want to automatically start taking away more and more and more and more and then we want to stop taking away stamina whenever we um, get to that point and that's just going to be more complications as we go along because first off we're checking to see if, if it's greater than zero if so, 
then we need to add a variable of can sprint. We'll change that to a boolean. Reason why I do a compile and save, that save button, just get in the habit of hitting it often. Turn off auto saves. Don't let something else automatically save for you. Don't be lazy. Save that shit every chance you get. You have to scratch your head, you have to scratch your nuts, hit save. There's no reason why you shouldn't be saving your data. So, first off, we're going to check if we have more than zero stamina right off the bat. If we don't, then what we want to do is we want to set can sprint to false. And just the same here is um, we're going to have to stretch all this stuff out. Make some more room. Come on. You three, right here. Come on down. And then let's grab all of you and show you even farther away. Because what we have to do here is, again, branch nodes. Use a lot of freaking branch nodes. A lot of freaking variables. Can we sprint? Easy enough. We're just going to ask that question. Can we sprint? If the answer is yes, then check our, our stamina. If it's above zero, then let's go. We start sprinting. And if it is less than zero, it's just going to reset to, to that. And four giggles. Let's see if we can break the world here. Let's run a delay. Because I'm sure I'm going to screw this up. And let's put a one second delay in. And I'm going to drag this down because we're going to link from here and link back to there. And we're checking at this point. We're looping back to this. Or do we have um, more than zero? If not, set can sprint to zero. But then what we're going to end up having to do is go back in and do a stamina regeneration system. But let's just see how bad we screwed this up. You're good for our HUD. And let's go to the bottom right this time. Let's grab a progress bar. And I'm going to make it freaking huge. Absolutely huge. Way bigger than we need it to be, just for the halibut. And we're going to make this yellow. Because stamina is yellow, right? I'll throw it up there. That's good enough. Let's try that at one. So red, one. Green, one. Blue, zero. Alpha, one. And no, nope. well, whatever. Um, yeah, we're using that one. And from our, our percent, we can do it and see what happens as, as we're going above and below the line there. So, let's not make it too freaking huge. To get the point here is now we're going to create a binding. I know this is terrible. Create a binding and we're going to get stamina from here. Nice and easy. If you don't want to take all this time to do all this stuff right here, just do this. Grab this, control C, and grab it from something else and control V. Now I just connect that in. 
We want to get stamina. And from here, no, we don't want to link directly into there. We're going to, need to do some math. Oh no, math. My brain hurts. Oh shit. Um, we we're just going to do integer divided by 100. Then we can link this here into that, and that's it. Occasionally, this setup doesn't like to work with integers. It only likes to work with floats, and if that becomes an issue, we'll just tell this stamina to be a float instead of an integer. So, compile and save. We can close that one and close that one. We still have nothing in our event graph for our HUD. So now we go in here. Look, our stamina bar is full. Yay! But what happens now if we sprint? We need to subtract our stamina. Um, we're overcomplicating this, so I'm just gonna peel it back, peel back to the layers of the onions here, and let's not get totally goofy here. So let's Control C. Always start simple and then get complex as you go. I'm just putting everything back the way it was before. And again, start simple. At this point, when we are sprinting, we are setting our max walk speed to 600. And then we are going to... From here, we want to set our stamina. And actually, we need to come from here. Integer minus integer. And let's go ahead and drop 10 from that. And let's see that we're, we're getting it to actually move. Oh, shut up with your error. Compile and save. So now we hit our sprint key. Wow, it just totally killed everything. So this is this is what I was saying about that. Our stamina, let's convert that into a float. Yes. Go ahead and do the your thing. You done? Thank you. Compile and save. Now it it's gonna break a few things here. We need to dump that and now do that again our float minus float because we went from an integer to a, a float. And now we hit compile and save. Let's go back into our widget here and see that it whether or not it actually fixed it or not. Let's go to our graph, get stamina, double click on it, and you can see we need to get rid of these two. And then just do it again vector or sorry float divided by float and we'll set that at 100 and then connect that to there yes I, I don't know why but it just when you're doing a progress bar it seems to like being in a um, a float for some reason so you, it's I'm holding it down and every time I hit the, the left shift key to sprint, you can see it's, it's going down a little bit. It's going down by 10. So, actually it went down by 1. It changed itself. Or I didn't reset it. So let's do it as 10. So now we we hit it, we lose 10% off of our stamina bar. So, not while holding it, just by pressing it. So there's where we would actually, um, we would still want to go back in and set it, it make sure that um, we can sprint by having, you know, check to see if we had our stamina over 10, or over 0, excuse me. But we just want to go ahead and, and, and make it go away. 
while we press it, we want to do this, and then from there, that's when you would start doing the rest of your stuff. And you want to set it to every second. You want it to keep taking 10 away. Set that to 1, and let's see how bad that breaks it. And that's the thing, is sometimes it's easier just to go ahead and just say, I'm holding down the shift key, even though I'm not running, and it's steady deleting until it gets to zero, and then it goes to a negative number. So that works. So now we can actually just drag this over. Now, if you're you're getting blueprints that start getting ugly, just plain ugly. Now, you cannot put a delay in a function. And, and that would help to shrink down this quite a bit. But you can put it in right-click and collapse node. Draining. <coughs> so that's all packed up in this little tiny piece right here. But what if you want to edit that? How do you get back into it? Double click on it, and there it is. Another thing you want to do with that is you want to come in here, and if you're absolutely OCD like I am, and you got to rearrange things and make it look a certain way and all that stuff, this is a loop. This is a, st a stuck loop system with no exit whatsoever, and that's fine. But if you want to extend it past there, then all you would do is connect that to there. But we're not going to because we want this to be a dedicated loop. All I did was click back on Event Graph here, and it brings me back to this. So now this is our draining loop right there. So now we can do like we were doing before, and let's move that over, and we want that branch. And this first branch is going to be asking, can we sprint? Lovely. Easy enough, right? Can we sprint? Yes. Then do it. And go from there. And then it's going to drain. But here's the other thing is we want it to start draining. That's cool. And it's going to steady go down. And now we need to ask, is, is our stamina at zero? So actually, for now, let's right click and uh, do, 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 do. we don't want to collapse node, expand node. There we go. So we can unpack it up and bring it back out here. We we still have this delay loop right here. So. I'm just going to leave that expanded so we can see what we're doing at first, and then we'll we'll collapse stuff as we need to. Okay, so we're setting it to that, and we're draining, but we need to check. At this point, we can sprint. So let's go ahead and get that other branch. And we're going to have to check a few things really quickly. And we want to do like we did before. We get our stamina. And we get that reference to our stamina. What we need to do is... We need to ask, is it greater than zero? Is it greater than zero? If it is yes, then do that. If it is not, then set can sprint to false so there it's going to do that it's going to check to see if we're at zero and then it's going to stop working at all because what's going to happen is it's going to keep taking away taking away 
we don't we have to set a minimum limit or else it'll just keep going into negative numbers and it'll never check to see if we're at zero or not so now again we're checking our stamina and we're subtracting 10 and setting our stamina to that and then we're running our delay and do we want to leave our delay here um probably no let's break our loop and bring it all the way back to here so that it's going to check to see if we're greater than zero and then if we can we keep sprinting and we take away 10 from our our, our stamina bar let's change that actually down to five and then a second later it's going to check are you at zero now no well let's keep on sprinting so let's test it out really quickly and since this map that we're on is a little bit on the short side let's go ahead and save and let's go back to our test map a little more room to work with so then we hit play so we hit sprint and it first off widget HUD widget anchor to the bottom right hand corner of the screen you idiot and you don't need to be that big you can be smaller now compile and save your maroon there it's in the bottom right hand corner so now I'm hitting shift and it's not sprinting but if I hit control it slows me down that's just fine I let go of control and I'm back to normal speed and nothing's happening on on this alright so it's asking here can we sprint this should be defaulted to yes let's try that so now we hit sprint and now we're we're walking faster it doesn't look like we're walking faster so damn it let's make the damn thing run faster set our max walk speed to 800 screw it we're gonna move not super fast but we're gonna move faster we're, so you can see we're actually moving faster here we're gonna keep holding it down keep sprinting around the map we want our, our stamina bar to hit zero and see if it makes us slow back down again <laughs> sorry I had to do something while I'm running here alright we're still sprinting at full speed I'm gonna slow down and it's not gonna let me sprint because we don't we don't have the extra stamina now so it didn't stop us um, it's greater than zero um, just for just for argument's sake here let's grab all this stuff here and let's move it a little bit more forward and let's go ahead and get our stamina and we're gonna hit equal equal or I'm sorry is our no nah, let's, let's do it this way um float we're gonna check to see if our stamina is less than zero if it is less than zero then um, we, we know this works we're just gonna shove this down here I don't normally stack my things like this but this is also another way of, of creating some room here so we're gonna come off of here and branch it again no we don't want to branch it um, can we sprint true then we're checking to see if we're at zero but we're also doing the same thing right here 
we're checking to see if we are less than zero. If so, then we need to set stamina. And we do need a branch. Yeah. Yeah, I just keep adding more and more and more. And that's the thing about it is you're going to constantly be adding more and more and more and more and more stuff. You're needing more and more and more room. That's why I try to show how to compact things as much as I possibly can. So we'll use this as an example right here. We're asking, is our, st our stamina less than zero? If yes, then set our stamina to zero. And then we're going to check at this point to see if our stamina is less than zero, is greater than zero, excuse me. If it's greater than zero, then we can do our thing. So I'm going to leave these stacked underneath here. And I'm going to grab these guys, this guy's right here. Is our stamina less than zero? If so, then set it to zero. We need to force it to, to not be able to go below zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight those four nodes right there. I'm going to right click and collapse nodes. You could collapse function, but this is good enough. And then we're going to call this zero set. And you see, it's already connected going through there. So we don't actually have to do anything else. Because this was not at the end already. So this, since we're looping back to it, we're not going to collapse this yet. We can't collapse into a function if we have a delay. So I'm actually going to, and I really can't do that, because I'm linked here with my set node. I have a reference to my, my character movement. I would actually have to go into it a different way, but we're not going to worry about it. So this part right here with the delay, we can stack this and make it a little bit cleaner. Take up a little less room. You can see we just, we just shorten things down from that to that. So, that's good enough. That should, in theory, do everything we need for our sprint system. So now, we we broke it again. You suck. Alright, so we are... Why did we break it? How did we break it? Yeah, I should quit while I'm behind. <laughs> was working just fine until I put that in there. So, but that's the thing is we need to check to see if it's at zero. And if it is less than zero, we need to make it clamp there at zero. Oh, all that shooting stuff. I got to clean that up. Um, so, yeah. I can actually take that and I'm going to delete it for now. Can we sprint true then go to there? It was working to this point and I'll get it fixed in another video. I normally try to leave these videos sitting around at the hour mark and we're at the two hour mark so. But we can see we can drain our stamina now. Sorry, interesting shadow there. Um, I'm not sprinting right now. I will I will get a, a much nicer system for a sprint. Um, and I will do a separate video just on that. For now, let's break it back down. Keep it simple, stupid. 
it's functional for now. Again, single player game and first person shooter. Now, you guys should you know, let me know what, right now if you want me to go ahead and quit screwing around with this FPS series and get back to the um, the actual, you know, like a third person multiplayer, that kind of stuff. Because a first person, you're not doing multiplayer. If you want a first person perspective shooter, then yeah, make it a, uh, that way. But you're not going to do it with... Let's go ahead and save that. Um, this is a first person template. So therefore, your player does not have a body. Our scoring system works absolutely flawless. Our magazine count works just fine. But we run out of ammo. We can't reload. We'll do that in another video. So, that are that. And so let's actually run through here. The thing that I wanted to do at the end of the other map was... Is that when you finish going through... And... Alright, here's our range map. There's that. I can grab more ammo. Even though I'm not going to be able to use it. I'm going to shoot my target. It reacts by moving. I shoot it again. I don't increase my score because I shot the same target twice. But if I shoot it again here, that's another point. But if I miss, oh, I don't get any score. Spacebar to jump. Doesn't matter. Shoot him all I want to, but I'm just wasting ammo. I'm not getting any more points. Right click goes into scope mode. Hit my target. I can see my target move, so it's a reactive target. Oop. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Alright, that guy has already fallen over. Occasionally, <laughs> these things don't like to sit on top of other static meshes. I'm out of ammo, so for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my player back, and the reason why I say you're not going to have a multiplayer game with a first person template, because you're just a damn set of floating arms with a gun. You're not an actual character. Why have this and a full capsule and everything else? So we got to do a, a crouch. Yeah, I can crouch, and it'll make my collision box go down and I can move under things and all that kind of stuff but it's still that you're not going to see any animations if there's another person running around what are they going to be another set of floating arms and a gun you're not going to have a, a model so you end up having to replace your your first person mesh from a set of arms to an actual skeleton then you got to have a full set of animations so to me first person is is fine if you're only building a first person game but who wants to just build a first person not to mention you know the fact that you're you know I, all the jokes about you know building a game that you can play with yourself no, I'm not going to get into that so I'm going to actually change my mag capacity here I'm going to go back to my ammo Go back to the the original system, and get rid of you. Get rid of you, and go back to ammo. Get and ammo set. Okay. Again, I mention this all the time. If you want to get a get node, hold down the control key, left click on it, drag it into your your scene and you're going to get a get node. If you want to get a set node, hold down the alternate key, left click, drag it in, and you're going to get a set node. So I'm going to set my ammo. Let's 
to that. I'm going to link that. I'm going to put that in there. And we're going to set our ammo to. Yeah, so that that's right. We're we're taking this is our shooting part. We're subtracting one every time we pull the trigger. So now let's go back in here and if we hit play, we can actually go into our widget. Sorry, and HUD widget, and we're gonna delete you, delete you, make that a little bit smaller, and we can go into our designer graph. And we'll leave our stamina bar in there for now. Um, we can get rid of our get mag capacity. Delete that. Compile. Save. And now we hit play. We just have our ammo. And we can pick up more ammo. And that'll respawn after 10 seconds. So if I run out of ammo, I can always come back over here and... There we go, more ammo. I guess, you know, if you want to, you could actually move this to your table. But you want to make sure that it's hanging off the edge so you move close enough to it. Your box collision is going to be big enough for you to walk into. So if you walk over to it, oh, come on, raise up. There you go. And let's go ahead and edit that and go to my viewport, box collision, let's bring it down. And we're going to make a 1.5 by 1.5 by 1.5. Make it a little bit bigger. So now we have no excuse. We can come over here and boop, grab some ammo. Now we have 60 rounds of ammo. We can come in here, shoot. To our hearts be light. And if we miss, then we can always go back to the start, pick up some more ammo, and we're good to go. Next video, we'll just keep it simple and we'll do some weapons. Change them out. Maybe make a G36 and throw a scope on it, and you know, that kind of thing. red dot scopes and what have you, or maybe a pistol. Now here's the thing, is scroll in, if I shoot right here, it hits the truck. If I shoot right here, it hits the target. So you actually can't just fudge and shoot through the thing. You actually have to do that. I did the one thing that I hate, and that's um, setting collision to uh, use complex as simple. Because what I did with the vehicle over here in the first part, these guys are hiding. Um, if you shoot, we'll say right here, you can see this is not the target. This is the car. I still hit the target. So the difference between that is I made my own custom blocking volume and I turned off collision on the car. So the car now has no collision to it whatsoever. If I come over here and play from here, I can still climb on top of the car, in theory. Here we go. Yeah, climb on top of the car. And I still have blocking volume to it, but there is no collision. If you were to take that same car and try to to walk on it without the collision box that I made to it. See, it has no collision. Whereas the tank and the truck, I did both of them. If you go into the details, click on there, open it up, and see what I did was I used complex collision as simple. And I probably could have done the same thing with the car. So let me actually try that. I'm going to take this collision, this blocking volume, and I'm going to 
delete it. I'm going to select the car at the magnifying glass so that I can find it and then do the same thing. For a small map like this, this is not going to be a problem. But you'd want to do it the way that I had it. Actually, let's go in here first off and let's play from here. So now you see there's no collision on it because I didn't turn it back on here. No collision. We want to do block all. So save current and again right click on the floor where I want to play from and play from here. And I can see I can walk into it, climb on top of it. That's all fine and dandy. But now if I zoom in, can I shoot through the window? Yes. But what happens if I shoot here? I can't shoot through the car. I actually have to shoot through the window. So, there you go. Now I'm trapped. Let me out of here, you son of a bitch. Stuck. Hacks. Hacks. Sorry. Yeah. That's what I've got so far for the shooting range. Um, <laughs> got all that done so far. I just need to finish out this last little section here. And then, in another video, what I'll do is I'll come back in, and I will set up a an end. You get to the end, and then it gives you a result screen. We'll do that kind of stuff in another video. We're past the two-hour mark, so... Hopefully, the first hour or so of this video, you found something useful. The last half of the um, video... Yeah, well, it sucked donkey nuts, but got nothing good accomplished. But the first you know, first hour was good until it was interrupted by the sound of random gunfire. For real. So. I guess I'll um, be hearing about that on the news tonight. Although it is after 11 o'clock, so. And I'll hear about it until tomorrow. So yes, that's what we got. Working shooting range where we can shoot targets. We get a score based on actually hitting. And the targets cannot be double shot and scored twice. So shooting a target more than once does not give you more score. I'll see if I can come up with some new creative targets on this and make this fully the, um, uh oh, I'm out of ammo. Oh no, I failed. I didn't get my final target. My score is only 24. It means I missed something somewhere else, too. So there's 26 targets, and I have no ammo left. So, yeah. We'll, we'll expand on it. Plus, check in with uh, Discord, and let me know if you have any ideas, things you want to see on this project. Maybe just to increase the fun of a target range. If you want this project packaged up so you can play it, um, let me know. Make sure both of those are hit. Those are leaning. Which tells me that somebody fell over prematurely and maybe I'm missing out on it. No, I forgot the barrel. You know what? I need to fix that right now. This barrel, you can't really hit. So I'm going to get rid of it, and that'll make my tar uh, my score count will go down to 25. But as you can see, that target right up there will sometimes fall over on its own. So, all right. You guys let me know on in Discord if you want me to to package up a version of this and throw it on on the um, on my Google Drive or on um, HIO or something like that just as a standalone just goof around or if you want to see this turn into a, a full game to where we can have a working magazine system uh, things like that but definitely check with me on Discord as always I keep Discord running on the right hand side I have three monitors so Discord stays up on monitor on, on the right. Um, I've always got stuff working on the left hand side on the left monitor and while I'm working on the right. Usually I'm either watching a YouTube video while I'm working or I'm just watching a YouTube video or 
for God's sake, playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Holy shit, that's consumed my life since it came out. Um, in four days' time after it came out, I'd already logged in 43, 44 hours of gameplay in four days' time. Almost 12 hours a day for four days straight. So, yeah, I had to take a break from that. So, catch up with me on Discord. Let me know what you want to do with what you want me to do with this project. Do I need to keep playing with it and doing videos on it? Or just start migrating what I'm doing in this into a third person? And I use the third person instead of the first person because when we start doing this as a multiplayer, then you need to have a full um, character anyway. And besides, with this one right here, I'm trying to use the Simbi Studios assets, and I have a mannequin hand. That's just not going to work. So I really don't want to continue a first-person series at all. Um, I actually want to do a third-person base, and I may end up converting that over and getting rid of this character because I hate it. I really hate the fact that it's just a set of floating arms. You know, so we'll talk about it on Discord. I thank everybody for watching, and we'll see you.